Hey fam, it's me Aaron for New Comics Show, and wow, uh, this is a great week. It's the fifth Wednesday. DC didn't put out that much, but hey, I got some great stuff. I got Lion Cats. I'm the only shop in Central Florida that has Lion Cats, thanks to um, a backroom deal with uh, a friendly store in Melbourne. They they somehow got hooked up with a, a Central Sequential and got a freaking pallet of them. They're like, hey, hey, you want some to fall off the truck? And I was like. Yeah, and I'm not lying. I mean, it actually talks. It's like lying. I mean, it's, it's really cool. And if you're not lying, it just purrs. And it's pretty huge, bendable tail. Neat, I like it, I like it a lot. But let's dig into these comics. I'll talk about that more later. Okay, Captain America, number two. Hail Hydra, the secret history of Steve Rogers revealed. Everyone that lost their shit with issue one, the, the last page cliffhanger of Hell Hydra. Last page cliffhangers are something in comics that like you can't really take at face value. Like. Yeah, it is what it is, but it's also a lot more, and you have to wait to the next issue, hopefully, to find that out. And uh, a lot of people went crazy with like, oh, you destroyed Captain America, you, you spit on my grave, and you, you made my service in Afghanistan a fraud, and now my little kid playing with the Captain America, I have to like put lighter fluid on it and burn it. Like, these are things I saw on the internet. I mean, the internet's real. I mean, people overreacted. Let's just say that, they overreacted. And this issue explains it all. It's like. Uh, Clarissa explains it all, but with uh, Red Skull. And I dug it. I dug it. Obviously, I guessed um, part of what it was. Because, you know, when Marvel's like, it's not this, it's not this, it's not that, it's not a clone, it's not, you know, this, not a mind control, blah, blah, blah. It's not. There's always one thing they're not saying it's not, and that's what it is. And that's what it is. And it's other things that um, Nick Spencer has written. Nick Spencer has woven this web, and it's freaking awesome. And if you read this issue uh, and don't think what he did is awesome with these puzzle pieces coming together in this way, I don't know what to tell you. Don't read it then. But um, it was great. And uh, we'll see what happens with Cap. But uh, you know, it, when, you, when you have a um, character that has this mythos, and that mythos includes things like a cosmic cube, uh, you really can't say things like, oh, this could never happen, you know, like whatever. Everything can happen. It's all on the table. And you know, once the story is done, I mean, it's either a good story or it's a bad story, uh, subjectively with your opinion or whatever, you know. But not after the cliffhanger of issue one. Let's just leave it at that, because that's silly. That's not what like real comic, uh, lifelong comic people they they understand the cliffhanger after the first issue. It's purely designed to get people to buy the next issue, and that's when you're going to get some meat and potatoes, some substance of what that cliffhanger is. Uh, moving on, Black Panther three is out. This book has been super hot, crazy, sold out, multiple printings. A little late, but not too late. And issue three is out now. Uh, Spider-Man Deadpool 6, this is a standalone while uh, Kelly McGinnis get ahead on their next arc. But um, this is uh, Riley Brown, great penciler, and Scott Ackerman from Comedy Bang Bang. And uh, there's hilarity in here. It's um, the Deadpool movie is being made in the comic book universe. And uh, Riley Brown said that he had to make his costume for the Deadpool movie costume less like the Deadpool movie costume because Fox owns that rendition, so they couldn't do it, which is kind of weirdly meta, like doesn't make any sense, but does because of contracts, legal contracts and lawyers and all that. It was a funny issue, and we have multiple printings of this, like the sixth printing of number one is out, the fifth printing of number two, and so on. You can get the whole first story arc and this new issue standalone, if you so choose. Spider-Gwen Annual is out, and it's just a pure, fun Spider-Gwen festival of, of stories. You got the Watcher, you got what she does for eight days a week, you have all kinds of crazy stuff, of course Spider-Ham's in it, and Jason Latour is awesome, and I, I really dig it. Uh, Darth Vader is building towards the finale with issue 25, everything's coming together. And um, if you're a fan of a comic shop and um, nerdy show, which I'm part of from time to time, and Flame On, they're all gay, all geek podcasts. You might have seen the um, campaign that uh, Joshua is doing, who was part of Flame On and is a uh, correspondent for IGN. And uh, his best friend was uh, a victim of the Pulse tragedy shooting here in Orlando. Um, he's a local Star Wars fan, nerd, great guy. And Joshua is doing a campaign to get him made into the first uh, LGBT Q uh, movie character for the Star Wars universe. And uh, in my opinion, no, this is not fan service. This is not like give Elsa a girlfriend. This is something where obviously they're going to make 
an LGBTQ character, obviously. Like Abrams already said, yeah, yeah, we're gonna do that. But um, <laughs> I'm paraphrasing. But um, he's like, what? Uh, uh, are you sure Poe wasn't? Uh, no, but anyway, um, obviously they're gonna do it. So they could do it and use Drew's likeness who uh, died or some variation of Drew's name. And I think it's a cool way to um, have his legacy as a gay Star Wars fan go on that young gay um, Star Wars fans can have that representation. So if you are interested in that, you can sign the petition. If you're not, um, you know, don't. But um, I did because I think it's cool. Um, <laughs> Haunted Mansion's out, which is um, selling crazy good. Can't wait to get those Haunted Mansion uh, Funko exclusives from San Diego Comic-Con when I go there and cover it for Bleeding Cool. I'll do some coverage. I'll cover the, the Diamond Retail Lunch. How about that? And um, <laughs> Disney Princesses, every issue. This is funny. I read it to my daughter. She loves it. And um, yeah, if uh, you have a daughter or a niece or any young woman in your life, you need to get her DC Superhero Girls Finals Crisis. Not Final Crisis, Finals Crisis. It's um, superpowers, super problems. Um, Mo powers, mo problems. It's an original graphic novel. It's just 10 bucks. It comes out of what you might have gotten for Free Comic Book Day. And my daughter loves this. She loves the action figures. It's very well done. I love the Easter eggs of um, the really obscure male characters and even obscure female characters they put in the scenes, like in the background and whatnot. Um, I'm digging it. So I think it's well done. It's original. And if you have a daughter, seriously, read it to her. Read it to her. You know, you have the time. Make the time. Do it. Um, DC, it's the fifth Wednesday, so DC doesn't do any new books, really. They did some annuals, that, no, regular books. Uh, they did this third printing of DC Universe Rebirth, which has a cool Wally West on the cover. And um, DK3, The Master Race, conveniently came out this week when uh, they didn't have much else. Book five, I'm enjoying this book. I, I really like it. I'm digging it. And um, moving on, finally, talk about Saga. Saga 6 is out this week, so if you get it in the collections, here it is, Saga 6. If you don't read Saga and you're local to a comic shop, you can come here. Just tell us, I've never read Saga, and we will put this Saga issue one in your hand, and you can leave with it for free. Like, seriously. Seriously. I'm not, I'm not shitting you. Like, no, I, I'm not. So you should read this. The first trade is only 10 bucks. It's one of those image first 10 bucks trade things to get into it. And like I said, we have Lion Cat. Uh, we're only selling it in the store. Essential Sequential sells it online for a little more than we're selling in the store. But here, if you buy it from us, you get uh, entered into a raffle to win this, uh, what is it, Glee, Glee, Glessy, Glessly? Glycy. It's a, it's, it's a type of print that's on canvas. It's a canvas print. It's signed and numbered. It's Saga. Uh, you can tell it's from this cover of issue one and volume one. And uh, we have number 268 or 300. And your odds would be very, very good of winning because we didn't get but two cases of these that fell off a truck. So someone is going to get this signed and numbered canvas print called a Glycy for the price of just buying this Lion Cat. I'm not lying. Someone will win it. I'm serious. And uh, we're going to do that drawing, that raffle. You don't want to be present to win on July 15th. So it kind of puts a timetable like buy yours now or else you won't be part of that. So, and the odds of winning will be even better because less people will have bought one, but I want to sell them all and give someone that. Okay, moving on, Jupiter's Legacy 2 is out. I really dig this book. I kind of forgot about all this stuff with Jupiter Legacy because of Jupiter's Circle of 1 and 2 has been what has been coming out lately for years. And I'm really digging that, but I super got into this issue. It was, it was fun. I like Mark Miller, uh, Mark Miller. I dig him. And um, we're going to have deals on Jupiter's Legacy, a discounts on this issue, and also a discount to buy the trades together. Get in on it. It's cool. Uh, it's time. We have three volumes of the trades and one issue of um, volume two of Legacy. Moving on, Hillbilly by Eric Powell. This book is brutal. This is, it's, it's fun. It's, it's, it's a redneck. Sure, it's a hillbilly. And um, it, instead of Witchblade, it's kind of like Witch Cleaver. He has this big devil's cleaver. And he kills witches. And you find out why when he tells a story to a young boy. And um, it's classic Eric Powell. It's sort of like his goon. Um, I can't wait for his Satan Sodomy Baby uh, issue two. Part two comes out. Uh, Satan Sodomy Baby two is going to be polybagged. Um, 
to protect the kids, obviously. And I think that's coming out next week, hopefully. And try Hillbilly. You know, if nothing else, this is his first appearance. Obviously, it has a small print run, being it's self-published. And it's quality stuff. I, I laughed a lot. Uh, Spectrum. Look at this book. You know these people. You know Nathan Fillion. You know, you know Alan. You know they, um, Alan co-wrote it. They both co-produced it. And they can't do uh, Serenity Firefly, so they're doing this. It is sci-fi stuff. It's similar. And if you like that, you'll like it. Check them out online with their con men stuff. And check out the book. It's only $2.99. So do it or don't. Moving on. <laughs> Cryptocracy. This is Van Jensen from... Um, he did the Pinocchio Vampire Slayer where Pinocchio says a lie, uh, smashes his nose off, and stakes vampires in the heart. Pretty cool stuff there. Um, he did Green Lantern for a while. He, core, he did uh, Flash with, um, with his buddy. And this is his ongoing, creator-owned book, Cryptocracy. It's a secret group that runs everything, but there's nine levels. There's nine families that run the world, and there's nine levels of people from just the regular people that have no idea about the conspiracy on up to the useful idiots, to the family members that are just dummies and cogs that don't have power, to the ones that are ruling everything. And um, there's cryptics, there's uh, animals that no longer exist that are in here that's part of the thing. There's greys from, from you know the Area 51 greys, the Roswell, and uh, they just scrub people's minds, drink Mountain Dew, uh, eat Doritos, kind of like uh, internet trolls. And um, what I really need to say about this is I'm in it. I'm literally in this book. I'm someone that sees through the conspiracy because, you know, I'm pretty smart. And uh, there's a panel that has me, my likeness, my first and last name with other conspiracy buffs like Jesse Ventura. And um, I guess I get my mind scrubbed. I guess that's what they're trying to do. I hope I don't. I hope I show up in another issue. That would be awesome. But. Um, yeah, it's great. It's been re advanced reviews on other sites, 10 out of 10. I highly suggest it, and not just because I'm in it. And since I'm in it, sure, I'll sign that panel. Thanks for asking. Uh, moving on, Jughead Volume 1 is out. Zadarsky, Henderson, love this book. Um, if you were getting Archie and not Jughead, seriously consider getting in the collection. And finally, it is kind of a big week, even though it's a fifth week, Sonic the Hedgehog, Mega Man, Worlds Unite. This is not Worlds Collide, it's the sequel and the first volume's out, so get it if you haven't. Enjoy that stuff. Oh, and um, the final part of Team and T, Bebop and Rocksteady, Destroy Everything is here. This book was ridiculous. It was insane. It's weekly, five issues, they're all out. Seriously come and, and check it out. If you like turtles and you have a good sense of humor, you'll probably love it. Um, and we have Lion Cat in store. Uh, no holds, come get them while they last. We still have a case. Let's do this. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye.